Hey class, it's Bill here continuing the week 3 demo. In the first video we covered a couple of topics. We created all the functions for our conversions of temperatures and we talked about preconditions and how to throw exceptions to uh, sort of argue that uh, the, the, the thing that was passed to us was really invalid. So we took care of preconditions and we looked briefly at the if statement and how that works. So our next thing that we're going to do is start working on our menu system. So let's jump back over to our code and let's start writing that. Uh, one could argue that this should go somewhere other than main, but really if we do that, main isn't going to have anything in it. So <laughs> we're going to put this in main and I think that kind of works out okay. So I think the obvious thing is to display the menu we're going to do a bunch of print statements right we're going to print print lens and so let's see if this makes sense to you I'm going to come in here I'm going to paste these guys and I'm going to outdent them and I can do that with shift tab after I select them so you can see that I'm going to have a bunch of print statements right that that's kind of obvious and the next thing we're going to need is to get a choice from the user well, how do we do that? Well, we know from uh, our last work that we need to use a scanner object to do that. So we need something like scanner. Uh, this is not a magic word. I'm going to use console in. That doesn't. That's not a magic thing. You can put input or you can put in or con or you know whatever you want as a variable name. But I, I like that for the moment. And then I tie that to system.input. Remember, scanner is very generic. It can be used on strings. It can be used on files. So we need to do that. And as you remember, we also are going to need an import. So we're going to have to say we want to do java.util.scanner. Right? We got to bring that guy in. All right. So now we have a valid scanner that's going to be available to us, and we're going to uh, then display our menu, and we're going to get a choice. So uh, how do we do that? Well, as you remember from last time, uh, let's get get the user choice, and then I'm going to just put a little comment up here display the menu right and so that's uh, that's a pretty good setup okay so how do we get the user choice well as you know from the past we're going to do something like uh, choice equals uh, console in dot in this case we we might think about this and go you know what those aren't really numbers like we're not going to calculate on those things so we might just want to make them strings so let's say that we make that choice where we say look we're just going to input a string just to make life easy so we could just say next right you can just do something like that and then of course we need the variable choice to be created so we're going to say string uh, choice right so that should take care of getting in our choice and then just for the moment because again everything you do you want to stop and test don't go on unless you know your thing works so now let's say uh, system dot out dot print you chose and then we'll put the choice in there right just so we have a very simple program and it does its thing and it tells us what we chose so let's see if that works no syntax error so everything seems to be fine so let's let's uh, run that thing it compiles and let's go run it and see if it works okay we're going to run main and we're going to say okay and then we're going to see our terminal window and it's going to say enter our choice that looks good and let's choose one and hit enter you chose one yay okay so we have a simple program but it is working so we like that okay so now let's go back to our code and let's see what we're going to do next. So uh, instead of saying you chose one, or maybe we leave that in there, eh, we know it's working, so let's go forward. OK, so now let's see what we're going to do with the menu system. So let's say just for fun, let's do one of these and say if uh, choice is equal to one. Right now, don't forget to put Right? Don't forget to put uh, two equal signs here because we're testing for equality. We're not assigning a value. In some other languages like C, it may let you do that and it le might let you get away with it, but it's probably not the thing that you want. So you'll often get a warning. Languages will warn you saying, I don't think that's really what you meant to do here. So we're going to say if choice is equal to one, and then let's just do a sample conversion here. Let's put it something in here like this that says, um, let's say a result just for the moment let's just say double result equals f to c and then we're going to pass it just a sample value of you know let's say 40 40 degrees right 
and then let's print that result system.out.println uh, result was and then result all right so now let's go see and then now notice that we're we're doing strings not integers so this is what we have to do right we can't say equal to one because we're using strings so let's see uh, what happens when we choose one and then uh, let's see what happens all right so let's compile it and let's see what is it I've forgotten oops I typed the wrong thing here so cool got that no errors now let's go run it and let's choose one wait a minute nothing happened what's going on there right what's going on with that well, something's important here, right? Something important to talk about is behind what's going on here. Remember that strings in Java are a weird combination. They act like elemental data types in some ways, but we know really under the covers they're not. We know that they're kind of objects too. They're just kind of uh, a weird mix. And this is one of the first places where we see uh, that strings are definitely not elemental. It turns out that this is actually the problem. We can't test for equality because under the covers, remember that strings are reference types. So you can't test for equality on reference types by using equal equal. If you do, what you're saying is, am I pointing to, am I referring to the same object in memory? That's not the same as saying, are the values contained in those objects the same? So this is an important point to note, and that is that when you're testing equality in strings, what you want to do instead is you want to say equals, you want to call the equals uh, method, and you want to pass it the thing that you want to compare it to. So you want to use this instead when you're comparing strings, and this is a good lesson because all objects, if you want to test uh, something like equality, the object itself has to know more and you have to test a different way because if you use equal equal you're saying am I pointing to the same object in memory which is a very different question than is the, are the values the same stop and ponder the book talks about this so you shouldn't be too surprised now let's run main again oops and uh, let's see what happens am I I'm still okay here we go and I'm choosing one and notice I do get a result so yay I'm actually doing a conversion now this is not very pretty so that's something that we're going to want to deal with later and one of the questions that's going to come up is should I go now and change all of my functions to round well no you shouldn't you typically want to do any rounding or displaying of things at the last possible minute because you want to carry around the good precision so we wouldn't want to come here and round things some of you uh, might be tempted to come in here and do rounding and you also might be tempted to say well I'm just gonna return a formatted string in here so I'm just gonna do that no 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 you we really want to carry around till the last second all the precision that we might need and then at the moment that we're going to display it to the user that's the moment to do rounding or formatting uh, printing so we won't want to change those functions but this gives you a quick little uh, introduction to uh, how you how you compare strings and this is another clue how strings are objects more clearly than maybe we've seen in the past so I'm gonna go now uh, because we've we've made that point so I'm gonna go now and make a couple of changes instead of using a string I'm gonna use an integer because there's some other points that we want to make along the way here so I'm going to now do next int instead and then we can simplify this and we can say if choice equals one and then we're going to continue our uh, video in a second okay so let's flesh out a little more what we're going to want to do the uh, first question we're probably going to want to uh, show a little statement for them show a little prompt for them to tell them that we want them to enter the temperature so that makes sense right we're going to input the temperature and then we're going to probably want to store that result so that we can uh, echo it back to them so let's do that and let's say you know input temp equals and we're going to get the next double from the scanner object so that's going to work nicely and then I'm going to want to uh, say something like result equals and then I'm going to call F to C and I'm going to pass the input temperature All right 
So that works, and I now should be able to do the conversion, and then I should be able to display the result to them. So I might want to do something like the following. Uh, let's say system system dot out dot print, and I'm going to say converted temperature parature is, and then I'm going to say result. Okay, so if do if choice is one, let's do it that way. Let's see if this works. And it says I've never heard of input temp. Well, I'm gonna uh, I need to create a variable for that, so I'm going to do that and say uh, double input temp. All right. So have I done everything right now? Nope. Same with results. So I'm going to create a double there, and I'm going to create a double here. And there we go. And this looks right. Let's see if it compiles. Yes. Let's see if it runs. All right, and go find our window. Okay, so enter your choice, one. Okay, enter the input temperature, 10.0, hit enter. Result is negative 12. Okay, now whether that's right or not, you should go figure out. Uh, you should know whether your conversions, you'll want to do that testing and make sure that your conversions are right. But that seems to work, and it got the double, and it displayed the converted temperature. One thing that's annoying is we, we're we done here, but we don't really know the program terminated. It's kind of ambiguous. So that's something we'll want to handle. And the other thing is, this output does not look very good, right? So we let's fix that before we uh, before we move on. Let's fix that part. So you remember if you took Python and maybe some other languages that there is often a way to do formatted input to make the stuff look better. And certainly here there's a way. Instead of using print or print lin, you can use print f. That is print formatted, right? That is a formatted printing output. And we can use a format template that looks like this. Again, if you took Python, this shouldn't be very, uh, very uh, unusual to you. This should make sense. I'm saying, hey, this is a field. I'm going to insert the, t the thing here. I'm going to take some data and I'm going to stuff it in here. And it's going to be eight wide. And two of those eight are going to be after the decimal place. And it is a floating point thing that I'm going to give you. And I'm going to put a comma here instead of a plus, because now I'm going to take this parameter result and stuff it in here. And the other thing to note is this is a print, not a print lin. So if you really want a print lin res type result on a single line, you're going to want to put a backslash n. That's a new line character. So now if we go run it again, let's go see if we're happier with the output. Run main, run choice, input 10. Ooh, nice, negative 12.22, and we see the new line was there. So that's very good. And also then we probably want to uh, say goodbye, right? So notice we'll probably say system.out.printf goodbye. Now, notice one of the things that we're doing here uh, that we that we're uh, that we want to pay attention to. Yeah, let, I'll cover that in a minute. Let's just put the goodbye here for the moment and say goodbye. So we know if we go back and test it, we know that it's already done. Now, one of the things that you'll see is if you start down the down the road, we're going to want to flesh it out with other choices. And so that's the thing that we'll do in the next video. So let's continue on with that thought. But we have a compiled and tested program that at least makes the first choice. And it sort of verifies that that output is reasonable to the user. We still have a long way to go with the program, but at least we have a good start. So let's continue. Thanks for watching.